Ian Plant, welcome to a live photo. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Great to be here. When do you feel like there was a story or a time in which photography really sparked in your life? Uh, right away. So my first mm -hmm. camera, that Pentax K1000, I bought about 20 years ago. And at the time, I was in my first year of law school. Huh. And after I got the camera, I realized then that I had just made a huge $100,000 mistake. Not on the camera, mind you, on my, uh, my legal education. Yes. I was hooked right away. Wow. And, uh, I, you know, it, it really very quickly morphed into a hobby. And then before I knew it, it was a passion. And mm -hmm. then once I worked about eight years as a lawyer to pay off my law school debt, uh, it became a career. And, and now I just call it a lifestyle. I really can't wow. say that it's something that I do. It is what I am. How does photography contribute to your experience of being alive? I sleep and then there's photography, and that's about it. <laughs> what have been some experiences that uh, when you think back on them, you think, you know, I was out there with my camera and I was just so alive in that moment? There's a lot of times when I'm in the back country, when I'm by myself and I'm in the wilderness photographing that, you know, th those are the times I think you can really feel alive, really connected with the landscape, with nature, with your surroundings, with your subject matter. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really important experience is for people to find that connection as much as they can with their subject matter. Well, and speak a little bit about your writing. How does that contribute to, um, you, you particularly have a gift in that regard, at least I would say so, from reading many Thank of your you. blogs and Thank some of your articles. What's really critical in sharing your work with others, whether you're doing it professionally or you're doing it just for fun, mm -hmm. is to be able to share your experience with people. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of people that, that consume photography that, that uh, like to look at it, they're looking for a vicarious experience. They're looking to put themselves in the photographer's shoes. Mm -hmm. And certainly the picture can bring them uh, a fair way, a fair portion of the way there, but I think mm -hmm. the words can help bring them all the way and really bring that experience to them. Tell me a little bit about your publication, Visual Flow. There are tools that you can use. There are different ways of seeing things and explaining how art composition works, but there's no rules. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the rule of thirds is a perfect example. That's something that I think Kodak basically invented. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a nice, it's a nice simplification of other principles, mm -hmm. and that's what makes it so attractive to photographers that it's easy to use. You can just look at a scene and mentally divide it into thirds, and it's mm -hmm. pretty simple. But there's no magic to it. Mm -hmm. And it may work every now and then, but it's not going to work for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so I decided I wanted to really delve deep into the subject and really try to, to, to come to some core principles of design that were informing these rules that people were repeating over and over again and trying to give people a deeper understanding of what's going on. What are some of your favorite, maybe most inspirational places to you as a photographer? I went to Venezuela last year hmm. to hike in the, uh, the Tapuis, which are the big tabletop mountains. They're about 10,000, 11,000 feet high, and they've got these flat tops, and they've all got these unique e ecosystems. Hmm. And that was an incredible experience. This past October, I went to uh, Alaska to photograph polar bears. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was incredible. You get out there, and you would see as many as 25 or 30 polar bears at a time, and it was just amazing. You go out there on the water, and basically the bears are on this uh, this spit of, of land that sticks out. And the boats can get right up to the bears as they walk along the shore. I mean, there was one point I was about 10 feet away from a mother and her two cubs uh, in the boat, and it was just really incredible being that close to an animal that, if it wanted to, could do a lot of damage to me. So. <laughs> if you had to pick one of your own images to hang over your mantle at home, uh, what image might that be? <laughs> well, I've currently got a few hanging up in my house. I actually don't have many. Uh, one of the images I have is uh, one of a mountain gorilla, and I photographed the, the mountain gorilla through a screen of leaves. So I got really close to a bush, and I found a small gap in the leaves, shooting with a wide-open aperture with a small telephoto lens so that the leaves are all blurred out. So it, it, I like the image because it's a it, kind of a mysterious presentation. I wanted to, to show how you know the animal in the context of its environment, I wanted to show how mysterious the gorillas are and how mysterious and magical the experience is. Uh, I've got another shot, which is a, a very close-up, eye-to-eye shot of a six-foot caiman in Costa Rica, and I had waded into the water to uh, get my camera down at water level, and I was getting in closer and closer to the, uh, the caiman. Now, I, I felt pretty safe. The water was clear, so I could see if there was anything underneath, mm. and I wasn't very deep, and I had my camera in front of me. The whole time, I'm looking at the Cayman thinking, I wonder when he's going to start thinking that I'm lunch. 
I was lucky because the whole time the Cayman was looking at me thinking, I wonder if he wants to turn me into a wallet or a pair of shoes. <laughs> so uh, he was as afraid of me as I was of him and eventually yeah. came and swam away. But I managed to get in really close and get this, this wonderful eye to eye perspective. Let's say 40 years from now. Okay. <laughs> you look back on your photography as a, as a passion, as a career. What do you hope is the effect on other people's lives? Uh, when you put a camera lens in front of your face, when you are creative with exposure and composition mm -hmm. and all of these things, you're really distorting people's vision of reality. You're distorting mm -hmm. the real world around you and you're showing, hopefully that distortion is something that's going to be artistic and it's going to be compelling and people are going to want to look at it. And uh, to me, that's the, the real unique uh, beauty of photography as an art form is mm -hmm. the ability to take reality and ever so slightly twist it to, uh, to the artist's whim and present something that people haven't seen before. What would you share with a photographer who's just getting started into this wild adventure of, of ph photography of the outdoors? Push your boundaries. Don't just shoot what you want to shoot. Uh, personally, I try to shoot things that I normally wouldn't shoot. So even though I've primarily been a landscape and wildlife photographer, uh, I now try to push the boundary and I do some street photography, travel photography here and there. I try to mm. try things that I haven't done before because mm. uh, I think it's a really great way just to practice your creativity, to, to hone your creative vision. Mm. And so I tell people just get behind the camera as much as possible. Whenever you have free time, mm. just let it fuel your passion for photography. Get out there and shoot. Ian Plant, thanks so much for your time here on A Live Photo. Thank you, Paul. It's been a lot of fun.